Today in Us Weekly's reality recap, Tasha Adams reacts to that selfie with Austin Kroll. Austin and I actually met originally on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, and we were on the show together. So that's when I met him. I had never seen Southern Charm, actually. Then we're breaking down Lindsay Hubbard's late night McDonald's in with Austin on Amanda and Kyle's wedding night. We shared a bed together. Nothing happened. We both passed out. End of story. Like, that's just this whole, like, touching situation is just like not even my style. <laughs> Plus Kyle Cook joins a new reality show, Jess wants to be exclusive with Corey, and Rachel reacts to Jess's comments about her dating. Put on your sweater, strap on your ski boots, and get ready for Us Weekly's reality recap. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly executive producer Mandy DeCamp, and welcome to a Reality Recap, Winter House edition. We are nearing the end of Winter House. We are, it wasn't, you know, super eventful, but it was still a good season. I still can't believe they packed nine episodes into just like 10 days. It's, it's a lot. really amazing. Good for Bravo. It really is. <laughs> yeah. to the producers. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we get into the news and the recap, let's see what we got to, to say about last week's show. Patricia says, what Lindsay doesn't understand is that having a miscarriage affects both parties involved. It's always a me world to her. Jason's feelings are 100% validated. Interesting. Yeah, Tony Brooks also said, I'm on Jason's side. I think Lindsay has a way of convincing people she's a victim. Uh, Lindsay embellishes the truth and Jason does not seem like a liar. Jessica has to scare Corey. He, she has the mindset of a stalker and is very needy. I hope he runs. Oh, <laughs> Tony's <Lord>. got fighting words. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, I mean, what do you think? I mean, are you still on Jason? Are you on Jason's side, on Lindsay's side? And uh, You know, it's a tricky situation. I yeah. think you got to be in that situation to really judge it. Um, you know, I think that if the truth, if what he says that she went to the media and, and told him about it before he, you know, and didn't inform him, then I would say I'm on Jason's side, but she told you otherwise last week. Right. So I think it's a tricky situation. It's he said versus she said. Exactly. Such a tr yeah. tricky situation. Um, yeah. And I know that we have a, a, a our poll of the day. Um, yeah. Let's let's see what you guys have to say. Will Jess and Corey make it past Winter House? Um, I'm going with no, but I'd love going to with a that. hard no on that one. <laughs> oh, very hard. I don't even know if they're going to make it to next episode. Let's be no. honest. <laughs> Agreed. Um, all right. Well, before we get into last night's episode, we got some news about Kyle. Um, mm -hmm. He's be, going to be joining the cast of The Traitors, which is based upon a popular Dutch series series of the same name and hosted by actor Alan Cummings. So the network touts this as a psychological adventure in which treachery and deceit are the name of the game. Sounds very interesting to me. So the 20 contestants, both celebrity and non-celebrity, come together to complete a series of challenges with the objective of earning a cash prize, which could be up to $250,000. The catch, of course, is that three of the contestants, aka the traitors, are tasked with um, devising a plan to steal the prize from the rest of the group coined the faithful uh, this sounds interesting i'm kind of it into does. it yeah. yeah it sounds really good so besides kyle so we have a lot of uh, familiar faces including including big brother winners cody and rachel survivor players siri and stephanie below deck alum kate chastain beverly hills uh housewives brandy glanville former bachelor ari Leindyke. Shots of Sunset, Reza, and Olympian Ryan Lochte. Um, oh man, this is gonna be this is a, gr a good cast too. Great cast. What yeah. I love about this show is that they're pairing uh, or there's gonna be celebrities, but there's also gonna be regular people, non celebrities, which I think is super interesting. And it's a good cast. It's a good mix. I feel like I never really get into like the challenge and Big Brother and those types yeah. of shows, but I feel like this is one I could get into because of the cast. Like Ari from totally. Bachelor, there's a housewife now. Kyle, which is super random, I think, but I like it. Um, yeah, I'm into this. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch it too. I'm I'm kind of excited. Um, yeah. so we'll see. I mean, who yeah. do you think is gonna win? I mean, uh, I'm maybe I don't know. I mean, I, who knows? I have no idea. I would say Ryan Lochte's not gonna win. Right. Yeah, right. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Just judging my past. Not gonna come out on top. <laughs> Maybe Kyle. love it. Well, Kyle's pretty shrewd. I don't know, and that's yeah. a lot of money. He could use that for his lover boy debt. Seriously, a lot of money. All yeah. right. Well, let's get into Winter House. Last night's episode. Who got your cringeworthy moment of the night? Oh, I gotta go to Jess. I mean, mm. this whole situation. I wrote down this quote that she said to Corey in the middle of the night. He was trying to go out and party more, I think, and she said, "No, you're not leaving. I'll get, I'll get you water." And it's like, girl, you got to go let him get his own water. What are you right. doing? Like, you can't strap him to the bed. 
Um, the Then the back-to-back convo, she was having one with Jason about the situation while he was talking with Austin about it. Um, they were saying completely opposite things to each other or about each other in the relationships. She's saying that she wants us to go on past Winter House. He's saying definitely not, doesn't want to be exclusive. Um, the whole thing was really just also she went with him bike skiing like let him have a guy's day you know let him let him breathe his life yeah Yeah. Yeah, and then later on we see that she was mad at jason who was just trying to play you know mediator between the whole thing um she was mad at Paige about it right I'm like, if you're going to be mad at someone, be mad at Corey, not Paige right. and Jason. <laughs> yeah. And like, if you have all these concerns, go and talk to Corey about it. I think that Paige yeah. and Jason were just trying to like, be like, girl, don't put all your eggs in one basket because right. he probably just looks yeah. at this as a fling. Like hopefully now that looking back at it, she, maybe she thinks like, okay, they were, you know, had my best yeah. interests, but yeah, she is like a stage five clinger. Stage and five. also like, <laughs> like she lives in California. He lives in like yeah. North South Carolina, wherever, uh, you know, wherever he lives i mean realistically and logistically probably not gonna work no it's definitely not gonna work and then she made some horrible comments i think to rachel when she was saying you know people go for my body um and she was saying how she gets the guys first but maybe the guys keep her uh rachel later that was just that was just totally messed up i mean did she not realize in the moment what those comments like we're gonna do and we see that Rachel addresses her next week about them. Yeah. So well, good for her. Good for her. And now we know why she doesn't have a lot of girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Or like, boyfriends. <laughs> or boyfriends. Or, or you know, yeah. I mean, I feel like we said it last week. I really think that she is like a one and done cast. I mean, yeah. she never even posts about the show on her Instagram or anything like that. So it seems like maybe yeah, she's that's trying to forget about this just as much as we are. <laughs> I mean, I will give it to her. She is a reality rookie. Um, yes. you know, so she might be the type of person who watches it back and cringes herself at herself, yeah. you know? Um, so maybe she's doing that right now and realizing, whoa, I should have done that. So I don't think there's usually a winter house reunion. Is there? I don't think so, but I feel yeah. like there should be. I feel like there should be too. Maybe there will be. We'll see. Maybe there will be. I feel like, all right. Mine went to, I, I totally agree with you on Jess. Um, mine also went to Austin because like when he was talking to Lindsay about the whole, grab moment he like kind of changed his story a little bit I mean I think like he totally regretted even like opening up this can of worms when it happened and you know it it did blow over a lot easier than I thought it would be probably because Lindsay is sober so she's just like I'm not gonna put any more energy into this um or deserves because maybe she's like if I don't it'll just die down and blow over which is exactly what it did but it's still totally awkward and Austin just in general this episode is a total cringe we'll talk more about that a little bit later especially with Sierra um because like he the way he behaved at the end of this episode is just unbelievable unreal unreal and yeah yeah, we'll get into my quote of the night goes to Lindsay too we'll get into that later about the whole situation but yeah that situation I mean did she grab his leg or did she I mean she totally changed it to like she didn't touch him at all she had McDonald's in one hand red wine in the other and then she changed it later on to say that she grabbed his leg I'm like, what? This is you. This is no. You were drinking and you grabbed something, but I don't think it was right. So you grabbed something. We don't know what it was, but you grabbed something. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Who gets your Bravo celebrity of the night? Mine went to Ciara. Ciara for like, you know, at least like putting Austin in his place. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, coming over to apologize to her, and she's like, absolutely not. I am not accepting your apology this time. Like. Mm -hmm. go back to like the hole you crawled out of because I'm not here for it because why should why should there be double standards yeah yeah I agree um mine goes to Jason he Mm -hmm. he put Rachel on his back and skied down the mountain with her which I love because I think I've said it before one of when I first started dating my now husband we went skiing together I said I love skiing don't love skiing at all I totally (laughs) lied and didn't realize that like oh shoot he's not gonna like go on his black diamonds he's gonna stay with me because we're newly dating he would never stay with me now like on the (laughs) just FYI but back when we were nice to each other uh, he he wouldn't leave me that day he was I was like no no, 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 I'm gonna stay on the green and the blues you know I would never touch a blue um he stayed with me on the green mountain 
insisted on skiing down with me until finally I was just like I'm just gonna go to the lodge and let you have a day um but it reminded me of that and Jason putting Rachel on his back Re- Jeffrey did not put me on his back I was but- say, like, <laughs> chivalry at its finest it really is I like Jason I like Rachel I don't see them lasting past this I don't know if there's a ton of chemistry there mm. but I I think they're both decent people I like them I, I do too I like them too this was really sweet yeah. um all right so let's talk about feuds who's your feud of the night all right, mine was uh, Lindsay and Amanda at the beginning of the episode. They had a very heated conversation. Amanda was just playing devil's advocate and trying to explain to Lindsay that people are talking about you and the night of my wedding. Also, I feel bad for Amanda and Kyle that like this is what their wedding is now remembered by, whether or not mm-hmm. Lindsay put her hand on Austin. Right. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. But anyway, so Amanda was just telling Lindsay what was happening and Lindsay was giving her an attitude and taking it out on her. Um, I just, I just don't get it. Very bizarre. Very, the whole thing is bizarre. And yeah, yeah, I, I was actually kind of happy to see Lindsay and Carl exit the building and, you know, kind of move on. And I think even Carl, as like, they were leaving the house, he's like, we did it. So like, let's just go. We fulfilled our, our contractual obligations. (laughs) We can check that one off. (laughs) Um, mine went to Sierra and Austin, like, the like her saying that she had sex before she left the house and Mm -hmm. Austin getting mad about that for why I'm still like I think everybody was confused as to why he was mad that she hooked up with somebody before she went to winter house you have a girlfriend why should you care it was really bizarre I didn't get that also like if you really want Olivia there that bad you can bring her Sierra wasn't that close to it's not like she was like I'm gonna lock the door all right my favorite though was when he was referring when uh Sierra was saying about Olivia she she said, bring her simple ass here. We can all run laps around that simple. Bitch. I thought that was so great. I was like, <laughs> I totally missed that line. Oh, okay. yeah. That's amazing. Referring to Olivia, who I don't think she'd ever met at that point, or maybe he still hasn't, but I thought that was <gasps> funny. Yeah, but I didn't appreciate Paige's timeline of events what happened, you know, after the dog wedding. So, like, they hooked up that night. Mm-hmm. Then he kind of like ghosted her afterwards and didn't really talk to her that much. Um, and then got together with Olivia. So if I was here, I'd be pissed too. And she has every right to hook up with whoever she wants. Yeah. She does not owe Austin anything. And no, I can't really no. see them. And we kind of see the them talk about it next episode, but I don't really see them being friends after this anymore. No, I think that that's that ship has sailed. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. What uh motivational quote of the night? All right, I have two quotes from last night. There was a lot of good quotes last night. There were. So my first one goes to Lindsay. Like I said before, she said, I'm a very touchy-feely person. I'm like, okay, did you or didn't you, Lindsay? I know we keep harping on this, but like, you can't say I'm a very touchy-feely person, person but then say you were only holding your McDonald's and red wine. Right. Like, all the McDonald's work. should be getting paid. The amount of time they've been talking about the McDonald's that they got after the wedding. I even want McDonald's now. Right. <laughs> like, Give me a Big Mac, please. <laughs> and my second quote goes to Paige. I thought this made me laugh out loud. She said, I've never seen someone in a black leather pant referring to the, the girls in Charleston um, because she's contemplating moving there for Craig. So she said, mm-hmm. I've never seen someone in a black leather pant they're my that's my whole personality <laughs> I love really it funny. and I, I live in the south the- now and people do not wear black a lot here <laughs> so I totally agree with her I miss my all black wardrobe totally I don't see her making the full-time jump to Charleston but I don't know maybe yeah. who knows I yeah I almost see him more in New York because he's yeah really from Charleston he's from Delaware and no one mm. wants to live in Delaware so Right. I feel like New York's more of a compromise for them. Totally. I think so too. Yeah. Um, I went to Ciara who said, oh, talking about Austin says not even the best cleaning lady in town can clean up his mess. Totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, let's move on to our um, exclusive interviews of the week. She may not be on Winter House, but she definitely did take a selfie with uh, Austin Kroll, and that is Bachelor Nation's Tisha Adams. So she talked to us ab- about what went down um, during that selfie moment. Take a look. Your friend Austin Kroll helped stir the pot for you a little bit too. Um, how did you become friends with Austin, first of all? And do you watch Southern Charm? Are you into the the that Bravo nice. part? So Austin and I actually met originally on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. And we were on the show together. So that's when I met him. I had never seen Southern Charm actually previously. Um and we kind of just have a, a couple of mutual friends here in the city. And he 
every time he is here, I happen to run into the man, um, but he's awesome. Yeah. So I don't, I can't say that we're fully in love. Like he has played, but you know, love you, Austin. No. Um, would you ever date another reality star like that? Would you go there with Austin for you? What would it take to make a relationship public? Because you know what it's like to be on all sides of that. I think, um, I don't know. Never say never, obviously, but I don't know where to go with this one. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll just leave it there. We'll see what happens. Never say never. With Austin or with it's anyone? It's difficult having a, a public relationship. I think that's one thing that it's another lesson I've learned is I really want to protect that in the future um, and kind of maybe keep it quiet and under wraps for a minute and then maybe let the people in on the on the news after a little while That's just fair. because people are private investigators. I don't even know how they figure out half the things they do now, but yeah, no, it's, it's scary. And people are going to ask you, I don't think we should get our hopes up. I don't think that they're going to be no. dating anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think so. Nope. Just a selfie one and done. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to get to more of our chat with Lindsay Hubbard and she here is explaining why she went to Austin's room the night of Amanda and Kyle's wedding. So we've talked a lot about her. Let her speak for herself. What really happened at Austin at Kyle and Amanda's wedding? And why didn't you stay in Carl's room that night? <sighs> Okay, so um, I know this whole situation. So Carl, for whatever reason, he was in a different hotel. Like you had options of two hotels and he chose the other hotel, I think because he had a lot of duties at this wedding. He was officiating, he was a co-best man, you know, and he's, he's sober, right? So I think he wanted to focus, he wanted his privacy. He was at a completely different hotel. The rest of us were at this other hotel. So... Come wedding night, um, you know, Carl winds up. We all pack into our rental car and like legitimately, I want to say there was like 10 of us like in the trunk, like it was a Jeep. So there was, we were just like everywhere. So he drops us off at our hotel and then he goes to bed. He had a really busy day of officiating. He was exhausted. So I was like, Austin, I'm starving. Can you see if the restaurant downstairs is open? Um, he's like, I'm starving too. Let me check. He's like, no, it's closed. I was like, great. You order McDonald's. I I have a bottle of wine in my room. I'll bring it over. Um, so McDonald's comes. I go over. We just sit and we chat about, you know, recapping the wedding. Like, you know, how is it like seeing Sierra? Like, you know, how, you know, just whatever. Like we saw so many different people. Um, and that was it. Then I was like, put something like, put a movie on whatever. So I pretty much passed out immediately. And that's really it. Like it was a very innocent pass out. Um, for anyone who knows me, I sleep very hard and I, and I just like sleep like a mummy or like, or like you're burying me or something. Like I just like, I pass out and that is it. And then I woke up, he was still sleeping and I went to my room and packed left the next day no problem where he gets this other story is just like it feels like he's been doing yoga right because it just feels like such a stretch to me i'm like what i did huh like i don't even know what you're talking about um so i mean i i put this in the same category as like the psychic who told you know who told us that me and luke hooked up right like i'm just like were you dreaming, Austin? Like, and watching the episode, I'm like, I don't even think he believes his own story. Like, he's just like, yeah, no, we just passed out. And I'm like, watching it, like, what is wrong with you? I don't know. I think Austin, like, this is, to me, it's typical Austin, right? Like, he's, you know, he was blocked. He wanted to bring Olivia. He can't bring Olivia because... Now Sierra's mad at him again for not respecting her feelings and wanting to like parade Olivia in front of Sierra. And so he's trying to get back into good graces with her. But then I show up with Carl and we're like in our honeymoon phase, lovey-dovey. And he's like, ah, oh, I just need a win, you know? And I feel like he just wanted to feel like he had some sort of win mm -hmm. in all of this chaos, right? And so... He's like, oh, I'll give you guys a little nugget. But it's like, well, what are you even talking about? Like, we ate McDonald's. 
had had like a glass of wine and passed the fuck out. Like this happened a month and a half ago. Same thing. He came to my birthday at the summer house. We then go to Montauk that night. We shared a, a bed together. Nothing happened. We both passed out. End of story. Like that's just this whole like touching situation is just like not even my style <laughs> like yeah. well, there you have it there's yeah. her side of the story all right well let's get into our social spotlight of the week who caught your attention um it was kyle he is busy right now and he posted a clip from another new show he's doing it's called um elevator pitch and it's from entrepreneur um and he joined the latest season as a judge so here he is uh, being a judge and being a little boss that he is. That's pretty cool. Good for him. Yeah, I know. I'm like, Kyle is getting on every network. Good for him. Good for him. Um, mine went to Ashley Darby and uh, because it seems like her and Luke are really heating up. He dressed up as Santa. She was the little elf and um, they are making some house visits, I guess, or they were at a Christmas party and it looks like things are really going strong between them. They're making it work. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But I'm into this. I'm shipping this as the kids say, because <laughs> I mean, to go from Michael Darby to Luke that's an upgrade. That's a glow up. <laughs> that is a glow up if I've ever seen one in my life. Good for <laughs> Ashley. I love yeah. to see it. Yes. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Reality Recap Winter House Edition. Let us know in the comments, um, you know, continue with our poll. Do you think Jess and Corey are going to make it? Um, what do you think about what's going to happen in the finale? So please let us know in the comments below and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.